When they contract, it actually opens the tube a little bit more. Yeah. Yes, I would say less than a minute. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I didn't even know. Yeah, you did figure it out in lab. You should know. Yeah, I missed about five minutes. But it's very fast. Yeah, it's very fast. What if you don't have a uvula? Ah, oh, I imagine those are the people that can like put spaghetti in and out of your nose. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'll tell you. I'm sure you get a lot of it, yeah. My first time stuff when we were playing with Rose to his house with Michael Tyler. Oh, yeah. And somebody surprised him, and the other part was like down. He got surprised, so he was going to try to pull it out. Yeah. Oh, that's No, I know too, like, some people, especially children, will have, or special children, some people have enlarged uvulas. Um, and that will contribute to, you guys know what sleep apnea is, like basically where you're kind of like suffocating while you're sleeping? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if you hold a lot of weight, I don't know about your dad, but yeah, if you hold a lot of weight, um, or if you have an enlarged uvula, and they'll take it out. Like it's not uncommon. Um, or any of you that have like had something to drink and then somebody made you laugh, right? And it all comes out your nose and you're reflexively pushing it back up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what is gastrointestinal uh, or gastroesophageal reflux disease? All right, so this is more severe than heartburn. All right, uh, but a lot of people confuse it with heartburn. So heartburn is really um, that lower esophageal sphincter, right? This guy here. Um, in some individuals more than others, uh, different things can trigger a relaxation of that sphincter, right? So for some people, um, it can be alcohol or, well, I won't say it can be, alcohol and smoking are shown to relax that sphincter. Um, but some people, when they eat certain types of foods that increase acid production in the gut, like onions, like tomatoes, like caffeine, um, or coffee, uh, or garlic, um, Trying to think, chocolate even, which I did not realize, um, can trigger increased acid secretion that can relax that esophageal sphincter. And because it's next to the heart, you get this burn in what you think is your heart, but it's not actually your heart, it's just your chest. Um, and that is heartburn. Gastroesophageal reflux disease is where you have a chronic relaxation of that sphincter. So pretty much any time you eat, you get this terrible heartburn. All right, and so how do you treat it? There are several ways, all right? Some people um, will just pop Tums, right? Tums or Maalox. So Tums or Maalox are antacids, right? So after you've eaten um, and you've already started secreting hydrochloric acid, you can take an antacid to help buffer it, right? And then you won't feel that burn come up into your esophagus. If you are somebody that chronically experiences heartburn, you can take something um, called a proton pump inhibitor, like uh, Tagamint or Pepsid, Pepsid AC. I don't know of any others. Uh, I know there are some, but I don't know what their names are. Um, if you take those, that prevents you from actually making too much hydrochloric acid, right? So you don't, it's the type of the preventative measure, but usually I think most of, most of those medications, you have to take one every day, or you take one like an hour before you eat. So there's two different ways to help prevent it. Um, but if you have this, if it's a severe chronic problem, it can cause uh, a lot of wear and tear in the lower portions of your esophagus, and it can also be linked to esophageal cancer. So anytime that you are damaging the lining of these tubes over and over and over again, right, you're also causing cells to have to reproduce more quickly. Um, and you're more at risk for mutations and genetic changes that can ultimately lead to esophageal cancer, in some cases we'll see stomach cancer, um, colon cancer, all that kind of stuff. All right, anyone excited yet? <laughs> all right, this is gonna get fun. Um, so let's do this, let's quickly review and then uh, we'll take a quick break and then we'll talk about stomach. So what are the four layers of the digestive tract? That's okay, go ahead. Start from the inside. Mucosa, submucosa, muscularis, serosa. Or abdomen. 
Yeah, exactly. All right, where do you find the enteric system, the enteric nervous system? In between the muscularis layers, and what part is that called? Yeah. Well, not that one. You're right for the next one. What is the one in between the muscles called? No. Starts with an M. Yes, my hair. Yes. And then you have the other part that's where? In the submucosa, and it's easily called the submucosal structure. All right? Which one is in charge of muscle contraction? Myoteric, yes, and with in charge of secretions? Some you hope. How does the autonomic nervous system regulate the enteric nervous system? Yes, it increases gastric secretion. Okay, so the parasympathetic nervous system will increase specifically hydrochloric acid secretion or hydrogen and chloride secretion. Um, and I think we've beaten to death the enzymes and saliva, so I hope you know them. All right, uh, so five minutes at 11.49. Oh, so it's hard to get about the stomach. <coughs> Your brother does? How old is he? Oh, yeah. Some people are way more prone to it. You are. And Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah